Okay, this is me. My name is Jesslyn. I'm a GDE on Angular and uh, Web Technologies. I also blog. Also, I will be, um, I'll be organizing the uh, Angular Malaysia conference this year, June. So if you want to fly over, welcome. <laughs> okay, so uh, a little bit introductions of uh, NGXS. It's a state management pattern plus library for Angular. And it acts as your single source of truth for your applications and it gives you some simple rules to um, help you uh, in managing your state mutations and make it predictable. Okay, so there are a few uh, state management um, patterns that already exist, like library already exists. For example, the most famous one is NGRX. Then we have NGXS, and we have something so cute called Akita. Okay. So you might have questions like, why do we need yet another state management solutions? Because we already have NGRX, right? It's so famous, like everyone is using. So for me, it's something like choosing, picking your ice cream. So you have your own flavor. You might have your own ideas on how to make things work for you. So um, the NGXS team basically think through, they use NGRX and other state management library. After that, they find out that they want to compose their own flavor of ice cream. That's why this is how NGXS get created. And it starts with something like reimagine the state management for Angular. Are there something um, we can do better in Angular? Like, for example, in Angular, we are using TypeScript. Can we use some features like TypeScript decorator to basically um, reduce the boilerplate that needs to start NG, NGXS, that need to do your state management. Can we do that? Or are there any user API that we can put in and to help developer to get started easier with state management? Cool. So let's straight jump into the code. To get started in NGXS, it's very simple. They have a schematic, which you just need to run ng add, um, ng access schematic. Then it will set up the project for you, install all the uh, necessary um, dependency. After that, you can run ng generate to generate out the files that you need to get start your state management. So if you run the command that I show here, you generate the store. It basically generate out two files for you. Uh, at the minimum, you need two files to get started with your state management um, in NGRS, which is the actions file and the state file. Okay, later on, we will see like, what is that inside an actions file, what is that inside a state file. Cool. So we'll run through a demo and also live coding. Wish me good luck. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the apps that we are going to build, so this is the finished version. I'll show you the finished version first. Then later on, we'll build this together. Okay. So in these applications, if I refresh, it's quite simple. It's an app for you to order coffee. Like everyone loves coffee, right? Okay. So this app has two pages. One is the menu page. One is the card page. When I first come into this page, you can see that there's some delay because it's getting the uh, list of coffee from your server, from your API. And once it's loaded, if I click on one of the coffee, means that I'm actually ordering that coffee. If I click again, you can see that there's a few, there's two things changes. One is the card total, there's a number here. Wherever I add a new coffee, the numbers, uh, the quantity get increased. And the other thing that get changes is the checkout button. So you can see that there's a button here. So when I click it, uh, means that I check out and it will empty my card again, restart again. So when I click again, if I want to see what is inside my card at the moment, I will flip to the card page. And here, we can still see the check checkout button here. And it lists down the items, all the coffees that are inside the card. And what I can do here is I can add some quantity, add more coffee, or minus some quantity, or I remove it totally. Okay? And I paid for it. We are going to build this with NGXS. So let me show you. This is the clear state. 
we haven't done anything. This is my local host. So later on, we'll try to get the list of coffee showing it up here and wire it up everything with ng-access. Okay. But before we do that, let's take a look on, on the overall applications. Like the first thing when we use state management, right, is to think and decide what are the state that are available in your applications. So in the application, in the coffee app that I showed just now, there might be there are two state, there are two properties that we need to store. One is the coffee list because we need uh, wherever to store the coffee list. The other one is the card list, which we want to store the card and the quantity. So your state might look something like this. So you have an object, which is your state. You have a coffee list where each of the coffee have a name and a price and a recipe. That's how the, um, that's how the ingredients get, uh, get uh, paint on the screen. And the next thing is the card. So you realize that in the card, we only store the name of the coffee. We didn't store the price. Because the price, the unit price, we can later on sort of like join these two tables and get the price from the coffee list. And then we can do the calculations. Okay? Okay. Now look at the page again. Look at these two pages again. So what are the actions, uh, what are the activities that the user can do or the page can do? So the first thing would be get coffee list. So we have an actions to get the coffee list. We have an actions to say add to cart. Wherever we say add to cart, we basically pass in the coffee name and then trigger an actions to add that into the cart. And we have an empty cart uh, actions which didn't take any parameter. When you just click on that, it would just clean your card and make it empty. And you have uh, actions to add one card item into the card and remove one card item from the card. Also, we have one more actions which is totally remove the items from the card. Okay? So we have six actions. Now, what are the selectors or what are the display variables that we have in these two pages? What are the display variables? So one of the display variables would be our coffee list because we want to show up the coffee list. The other display variable might be your card list. Card list is not the card value that we store in the state, remember. It's a combination of, it's a joining between um, coffee list and the card that we store in the state. And then we come, we will come up with a table of a array which contain the item's name, the unit price, the quantity, and the total. So this is the derived result of um, combining state. After that, we will also need to calculate the total amount from the card. So from the card, we need to calculate the total amount that we need to pay, and also the total quantity in the card. Okay, so let's jump into the code. Okay, first thing, remember we have, let me close this, we have two files in um, ngxs. The first file is the actions. So the actions file, let me open the actions file. The actions file, so for, remember just now we have six actions. For each of these actions, is a class itself. So how we define an action is we have a class, we give the actions a name, so in this case, I will I'll just name the class get coffee list, and then we need to put in a type. What are the type? So this is like a description of your class. You give it a very meaningful description where um, what, are the, uh, what are the things that trigger, what are the page or what are the uh, area that trigger these um, actions and the name of the action. So in this case, I would just put, um, this, this is not necessary, but it's a good practice. You just use uh, square braces put in the place that you call the uh, actions. And then um, in constructor, in this case, in constructor, we don't put in anything because there's no parameter that we need to put in. So it's just pure get coffee list. So the second action is add to cart. So the same thing, we have a type that say that this is, um, this is triggered from the list page and we have this add to cart actions. And in the constructor, because we need to pass in when we call add to cart, we need to pass in the coffee name in order to add, it, add that in. That's why our payload would be a string, because it's the name. And 
add one card item, remove card item, basically just repeat whatever that we do. It's very easy that you see, um, just write a class and the type, then this is how you define the actions of your uh, um, applications. Next thing, the other files that we need is the dot state file. Let me open the state file. Okay, a state is just a uh, normal class. So for example, you can see that line number 17. Let me scroll it up. So in this file, we name it app state because it's my application state, you can name it anything. So what makes this state a uh, ng access state is by using type decorator. So we have a layer state decorator that we pass in what are the shape of our state. So in this case, remember, just now we are saying that in our state, we'll have coffee list, which is an array, and we have a card, which is an array as well. So then I have defined this interface for this app model, and I give it a name, which is an app, and then in default, I just pass in the default value of my state. So at the beginning, my coffee list should be an uh, empty array, and my card should be an empty array. Okay? Next thing here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger an action. Um, not trigger an action, sorry. I will write the logic to basically get the um, coffee list from my API. Okay? So just to show you, I have a service that already defined, which is called coffee service. In this service, I only have one method, which is called get list. So from this get list, I am using, you see that I'm using to promise. So this is a promise. Um, I'm using promise to basically get my data from the um, API. So I will be reusing this. Okay. So this is how I'm going to write my code. Uh, this. Okay, so let's take a look at this function. So I have a get coffee list. So for each of the functions in this um, state class, you receive a context, which is your state context, which is your current um, state. So in here, you, uh, you can see that I use a sing and a wait because we can use a promise in NGXS. So in here, I will await call the coffee list to get the list. And then now the next thing, what I will do, I will get the current state of my, uh, of my state. The next thing I will do is once I get the list, return and result, I will just update the state and set that the current state, but I pass in the coffee list to basically update the state. Okay? Okay, so how do we inject this coffee service in? in um, if you are using NGRX, there's no way for you to inject a service in your reducer. You can inject your service in effect if you're using NGRX, but not in your reducer. NG access is slightly different, so you have a state file. In the state file, you can inject your service in and use that service. So in here, what I will do is I will inject my coffee service in. Okay, so now I have the uh, function defined. I have the um, logic written. The next thing is I need to hook this, um, this function that I write to the actions. So what I will do is I will use something called uh, Elias Actions, another decorator, to say that, hey, wherever someone trigger the get coffee list action that we define in the actions file, please run this set of logic. Okay? So this is how we hook up the um, functions with the actions that we define. All right, so let me save it. Now that we have our actions, we have hooked that up. The next thing is we need to create a, some selector because in our list page, we need to show up the coffee list. The coffee list is something that we want to show on the page. I can use another selector, which is called a selector. Okay, another decorator, which is called selector. Then I slice, I just pick up the coffee list from our current state. So if I have a state dot coffee list, which is my current state, I just want the coffee list, I don't want the card in the page, so I just slice a particular um, 
particular state, and I use the alias selector um, decorator. Okay, and once I define this, now is the time for us to hook this up with our list, com list page. So let's go to our list page. Okay, so in our list page here, wherever we come to this page during the initialization, ng on init, what we need to call is we need to dispatch the actions. We need to dispatch the get coffee list actions so that it will call the API. So in here, what I will do is I will call the coffee list dispatch. So one thing I didn't show here is in the constructor, I have inject in store. Store is something that ngxx provides us. It provides you some helper for you to dispatch the actions, for you to get some value from the, um, from the state. So I would dispatch the actions during ng on init, and then I would define a variable called list, which is an observable. And what I need to do is I use another selector, with another decorator, which is called select. So from the select, what I would do is I would use app state. I would call app state, which is the class that we defined just now in our state file. And I just pick dot coffee list, which is the, um, which is this, the selector that we defined just now, okay? So once we define a selector here, when we want to use it, we can just call alias select and choose the coffee list, choose the selector from the state, okay? Once we've done this, we need to hook that up in our HTML as well. So in the HTML, I have write this code, so we'll just look through the list and then show the value, okay? I think we have done everything that we should do, so let's see whether it's working. Okay, so let's refresh. See, you can see that the list of coffee is populated, but now the cut value and the total is still not, uh, we haven't do anything yet, so you don't see the value yet. Okay, so in ngaccess, you can still use the Redux tool, the Redux Dev tool to do the debugging, which is very convenient. Do you think that it's easy? Like up until this moment, like how we are using decorator to basically reduce the boilerplate that you have. If you are experienced with NGXS, uh, NGRS, then this might look slightly different because we don't have effects. Everything that we write is inside our state file and the actions file, okay? Can everyone give a clap? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, <laughs> okay. So um, the next thing we need to hook up the um, the um, cut the total the quantity and the total amount. So it's also very simple. Go back to our state. What I will do is I will do something similar, which I create a different selector to basically calculate the value. So in this here selector. First, I will add the quantity because it's easier. I'll create a new uh, selector called quantity. So for the total cut quantity, how do I calculate this is I will get the, um, the value, I will read the cut value, and then I do a reduce to read through all the value, and I sum up the quantity. So remember my cut, I have the name and the quantity. In this case, I just need the quantity, so I do a reduce and sum it all together then I get the total. Later on, I can use this value in my, um, in my header, the, the component. The next, I am going to add the um, cut amount. Cut amount is slightly tricky because you need to combine basically two, um, two tables, uh, like two, two value, you need the cut and you need the uh, coffee list. So this is how we do it. So for each of the card, we just loop through, we map the value, and then we get the unit price. So from the card, we get the name. From the name, we search the name from the coffee list to get the unit price. After that, we'll just return the, uh, we just calculate the unit price times the quantity so that we get the um, sum. After that, then we just sum up all the 
uh, price together and re return the sum to the um, to whoever needs it. Okay, so once we created these two uh, selector, now it's time to hook that up in our UI. So first, I will go to the um, header component because in the header component, this is where I have my cut quantity. So the same thing, I have a cut count dot cut count stream that I already defined the variable. The next thing I need to do is I have a select. Say that I just need to select the total cut quantity. Okay, so the total cut quantity is the selector that we created just now. Then I save it. And then in the um, pay component, which is our checkout component, which we display the total amount, I will do the same thing again. So I have a variable defined called total. And then I use the selector. I, I, I use the decorator called select, um, F state the total cut amount, and then I save it, and everything should work. So let's see. Go back to my screen. Does that work? No. You see that if I click on something, the total is showing zero, zero, the cut is showing zero, but when I click, it doesn't respond. Why? What happened? because we forget to do one thing. Just one, just one line of code, then it will work. Can everyone guess what is that? No, we don't need subscribe because there's already pipe a thing in the HTML that I didn't show. Good try. Uh, because, because I didn't, the, the add card actions, this is the demo tool I supposed to show. So we have an add card um, logic that we already written, but we haven't hooked that up with our actions yet. So when we click click add to cart, it basically doesn't doesn't call add to cart actions. That's why it didn't uh, update our state. So since I have the logic here already, what I need to do is I just put in like actions, and then I will pass in add to cart actions. Basically, hook the actions up with the logic. So now if I save again, it should work. So you see, when I click. OK. <laughs> Thank you. And um, this action is quite flexible. So I have a add to cut actions. But in my cut page, I have this add button as well. Can you see that? I can call the same actions, which is the add to cut actions, or I can have another actions which call the another name. For example, I will call this add one card item, but trigger the same functions, the same logic that we are re we return. So we can configure this in our code. So I can say that hey, wherever someone trigger this add to card actions or add one card item actions, please run this set of logic because they, they are referred to the same thing. So I will save it. So now if I go back to my um, coffee again, if I click it here, and if I click plus here, you can see that they are triggering two different actions, but the uh, logic they are running is the same. OK? OK, so this is basically what you need to uh, it's quite easy, you just get started working with NGXS. There's something more, which um, if you still like um, observable, you see that we actually haven't talked a lot about RSJS. So if you want to use RSJS, so for example, my get coffee list is uh, observable, how do I do it? Okay, I will show you the other way to do it. So let me comment out this get coffee list actions. I will replace it with observable. So NGXS allow you to write uh, promises or use uh, RSJS. Depends on what you need. Okay. So this is the code. So I have the same actions defined, but this time I replace the actions with uh, observable. What I will do is I will use just call coffee list, get all, 
which return me observable. Then I run a pipe. So how do I update the state? I'm using the tab operator to update the state. So from the tab, tab, I get the coffee list. Then I will do the same thing. I will get the current state, and then I will update the state with the coffee list value. So if I save this, the code should run the same. I just replacing it with the other, the other, the other logic. So it's flexible. So wherever you want, you want promise or you want observer, it gets you cover. And another one more cool things that I want to show you is, if you realize now, if I come into this page, it will call get coffee list actions. So if I click it, I go to cut page again, and then I come back to this menu page. Supposingly, I don't want the get coffee list to get called again because I already have the list inside my state. So um, how can I stop this? How can I so first I need to check whether my coffee list have value. If it has value, I don't want to trigger it anymore. Okay, you can do this in your uh, list component. Oh. Uh, what is this? Can I close this? Okay, so go back to our code here. Go to our list component here. So in our list page, during ng on init, before we dispatch the action, I would like to check whether our coffee list already have value. It is already have. I don't want to trigger the actions anymore. So this is how we can do it. Uh, actions, check the length, okay. So I have a constant defined, whether it's the list populated. Then I use the store service that NGXS provided. In this case, you see that I, have, I can use dot select snapshot, which is the helper that um, NGXS give us. It would just select one time, which is the current snapshot. And then I just check that whether the coffee list have a length. It doesn't force you to use uh, observable. If you want to use observable, you can just use dot select, which return you observable. But if you just want the value for one time, just check for one time, you just use select snapshot which is quite handy. So if there's a list, then we won't do anything. So if there's not, then we just dispatch the actions. Okay? So this is, so my demo is complete. Okay, successful. Okay, nice. Okay. So now uh, let's summarize. Let's talk about slightly on the NGXS concept. Like what are the concepts? So first, we have the store. Store is our global state uh, container. And we have um, state defined in the store as well. Then we have actions. Actions is where um, you will call your backend uh, functions, your plugin, you will apply your plugin. And then your actions will mutate your store, will mutate your state. And you have your component. Your component will dispatch actions. Then in the, your component and you, in your store, you define a selector and you slice the state uh, to display it in your component. Okay, so I have repeated this a few times. RxJS is really awesome. It allows you to do like complicated stuff in an uh, operator way. But let's ask yourself a question. Is this a must? Like if you are using NGRS, then it's a must for you to learn RxJS. And RxJS is not that easy. So even until now, sometimes when I work with RxJS, I still confuse like what are the operator that I can combine it together to get the right result. So if something simple, I would prefer to use uh, promises to basically run a thing away to achieve what I want to achieve. So NGXS gives you an option to do that. And um, effects can be quite painful if you are using NGRS. At the beginning, you might find it a little bit painful, but after that, once you get used to it, then you might not feel that painful anymore. But it's a concept that a little bit hard when you try to teach a beginner the concept of effects. So in um, NGXS, it's take away the uh, effects concept. Everything is just an action. And NGXS allows you to use uh, dependency injections in your state class 
it, then you can reuse some of the services, some of the functions that you already written in your service. And actions is asynchronous. In uh, is asynchronous. Basically, you just return the promise or return the observable, and then NGXS will auto subscribe it for you and clean it for you. Okay, a few things more. NGXS uh, have a plugin system where it's easily extendable. So these are the plugins that are currently available. So we have CLI, the schematic. We have router. We have storage. So if you want, um, wherever you update your state, you want to store it in your local storage or session storage, you can um, include this storage plugin. Um, you have form and logger and WebSocket plugin as well. So these are the few plugin, and you can develop your own plugin as well if you want. And that's the other thing which they recently announced, which is the lab project. So the lab, NGXS lab, is a place for the team to experiment stuff. So there are certain things that there are some cool features that the team probably want to put in, but it might not be matured yet. So NG Access Lab is a place for us to do innovations without compromising the stability. So there's a very cool pro there's one of the cool projects called Emitter that you can try out. If you are using put in the emitter um, code, um, the, the package, you don't even need the actions file anymore. You can just have your state file and let NGXS emitter handle the uh, wiring of actions uh, for you. You just need to use a different decorator. So take a check out this one if you're interested in NGXS. It's quite interesting concept. And these are the other two um, projects that are currently under NGXS lab. And this thing is the thing that I really love about NGXS. It's, it has extensive documentation. So as a beginner of a particular libraries, it's very important that we have very good documentation that can guide you through. So NGXS, if you look into their um, document site, it's very comprehensive. It's guide you through step by step, how do you set it up, and give you some recipe on how are the common uh, functions like authentications or WebSocket. Uh, give you some example of how to set certain things up. So check it out. And thank you for all the uh, contributor of the, um, of the library. So I just pulled up the top five contributor from GitHub. And this is the last questions of the day. Uh, not of the day, of my talk. Okay. Do you know why it's called NGXS? Have, do you wondering like why NGXS? Like, pardon? <laughs> so when I first when I first look at the name, right, I thought it's NG, which is Angular, and XS. So they want to say that it's XS is like small size, simpler, but actually not. So NGX is the uh, same word. So X is the um, version 1, 2, 3, Angular 2, 3, 4, 5. So X is the number. So S is the state. Okay, so they have a video basically talk about that. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's all for my talk. Thank you. And you can try it. And uh, these are the slides and demo of the, um, of the talk just now. Thank you. This is a good talk. Very good talk. Yeah. No, no, you can come up here. There's steps too. It's good. <laughs> here you are. Oh, thank you. Yeah, great talk. I'm really impressed with the live demo too. Like honestly, that it's always so hard to code live. There was no failures. Well done. Like that. That just deserves an applause right there. Come on. <laughs> thank you. Um, is that on? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Bonnie, as well, because she she went through the. Um, so we went through the slide together just now to do a final check, and she gave me like some very good uh, advice on time my um, presentation. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> I have a joke for both of you. What's the object-oriented way of getting rich? Oh man, I don't know. Inheritance. <laughs> I'll be here all day. All right, all right that's Jem's right. first start to the morning. I love but, it. But serious, serious question: uh, What's the most popular programming language in the world? It's JavaScript. JavaScript, TypeScript. Oh, no, JavaScript. No, no? It's profanity. No? <laughs> all day. I'll be here all day. Thank you. Thank you very much. The uh, I, I found really interesting was that you referenced back to the uh, was it CQRS? 
Can you explain that to me? Just, you know, I'm pretty slow. It's a little early in the morning. Okay, so uh, CQRS is a pattern where you, separ you separate your command, the read and the query um, and the write um, functions. Yeah, that, but um, this ng-access is modeled based on CQRS, but it's also not exactly CQRS because it's while how to say valid or it purposely uh, build it to uh, valid certain principle of CQRS because in certain case you can get the value back. So if it's pure CQRS, you just invoke the actions, you cannot get the value back. But in this case, you can basically subscribe to the actions and get some value back. Okay. But this is, a, this is a conscious decision making. Okay, yeah. so in CQRS it's one model represents one part of data and another model represents another part of data and they don't talk to each other or they can't go back? Uh, they can talk to each other, um, but it's, how do I say that? <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm a little bit too. You're uh, just coming from a talk. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, your, your adrenaline's going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so CQRS, um, they separate the um, read and write operation which it doesn't mean that your model cannot talk to each other. They can talk to each other, but it's just the read and the write actions is like different. So you just issue a command. So this is my understanding. You just issue a command and then fire and forget it. Okay. And then you just, then you have another command to basically read the result from the state that you have. I got you. Yeah. I like that. That's yeah. a new pattern for me, but it's something I should think about a bit more. And where can people get a hold of you if you know, they have questions about anything you've talked about? Um, so you can find me on Twitter, or you can, there's a Slack channel which NG Access has. You can uh, talk to the team. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, and yeah, thanks for the talk. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.